My name is Eduardo Rivio. I study here maybe before most of you were not even born. You know? <laughs> so I left here in 1990. And uh, I want to, you were born? Yes. Doesn't look like. February. Ah, February. So yes, <laughs> you, yeah, OK. So uh, I want to apologize myself straight ahead for the Japanese people that are here and for the Italian people that are here, because I'm only going to talking about culinary, and I'm from Brazil, and I'm going to be talking about their culinary. So please, it's our way of Italian food and our way of Japanese food, OK? It's what we believe we can share. And it's a different way, but a place. It's a Brazilian-inspired in Italian and French, we're going to see as well, and Japanese, OK? So I apologize already before showing anything. So, please, interrupt me whatever you want, okay? Just do and ask whatever you want. I'm going to be as transparent as I can say and telling not just good things, but bad things too, okay? So, I'm the co-founder with my best friend of Trigo, okay? Trigo, it's a, a company where we started with Spolero in 19, was 1997 as a pilot and, and the real a company, we started in 1990, 1999, okay? <laughs> and we started as a franchisee, so we have a pilot of 12 square meter, which is like this size, and, but we were bankrupt, okay? So let's start now the before getting bankrupt, okay? That's the most important thing, because when you're bankrupt when you're young, it's very good. You learn a lot. So let's go back. So right now, our company is it's gonna, 2017 sold something around the whole system for, I mean, $400 million, okay? Uh, we, we had created more than 10,000 jobs, and we served last year something around 30 million people, okay? Just, so for, just for you to get your attention. Wow, eh? so it's a serious <laughs> thing here. So that's the idea, just to get attention. Now people won't sleep, and if you want to sleep, please just don't snore, okay? <laughs> So let's go back. So everything started here, OK? And yesterday, St Stockley sent me this. <laughs> These were our friends. So this is where we look 28 years ago, OK? So when we left, when I left here, I went to, to work at the Intercontinental Hotel, OK? And in Rio. And I, I left here as a spoiled kid from my, my father were in that moment very rich, not exactly that moment, but before coming to Switzerland. Two times they took me out from the class because he didn't have pay the last month or so. So there was a kind of happening in Brazil already, but I had the opportunity to come here, okay? But I was still a spoiled kid, and uh, I went back to in Intercontinental Hotel in Brazil to work. And that, I was a very bossy guy. I had a lot of experience, as you guys had, which I think is very good to have some practical experience. And, but I was too bossy. And I, didn't, I was fighting too much with people there. I was being a, a FNB assistant manager at Intercontinental Hotel Rio, and I had like 420 people below me. A and it was a very tough because I didn't know how to lead. I was just telling people what to do. And normally they didn't do, because I didn't know how to ask. And there was a guy called Lorenzo that was an Italian guy. <laughs> <laughs> called Lorenzo. Where's Lorenzo? There. Lorenzo. That he was the manager of the fanciest restaurant in the, in the, in the uh, hotel. And he taught me a little bit how to lead, at least start how to lead. It's like, don't tell them what to do, ask things to do. So simple, just change that. And I start to change, to change, to change. Then two years later, there was a, a, a big, um, a big, uh, how do you call it, a crisis in Brazil, something that never had before, not big crisis. In Brazil is almost like every year. But anyway, the guy was going to be fired. And, and he helped me so much. And he helped me so many people there. I said, no, we cannot lose this guy in the company. He managed to send him to Miami to work there. And then three months later, I left. I opened a, a new restaurant with my best friends and other friends. And then we opened 
one year later another restaurant and, and that moment was very easy to open a restaurant because at that moment in Brazil middle high class were not used to have restaurants there so just for us to be open a restaurant was something that we were the guests that were going to be coming to the restaurant so it was easier the media was on us and, and we did a very exposed media on us very big mistake okay in that moment and then we open other restaurant, we have a lot of friends and people, oh, I've always dreamed to have a restaurant, now I know you, let's put money up. In five years, we have 97, we had seven restaurants and one uh, catering company, outside catering company. And each restaurant was different from each other. Even with the same brand, we managed to have different experience, very, very much different. And at the end, when you are we st I started with 25, 26, the first restaurant. So when I was around 30, uh, we were bankrupt. And why we were bankrupt? Because first of all, we were too young and we made too much success. So a man with success, too young, is so stupid. It's so, so, so stupid. Because they really think that they are the ones. And we, we really thought, I thought I was Superman, and nothing would reach me. And then we took a lot of money to open new restaurants, about 5.5 uh, uh, interest rate. Do you think this is high? Yes? No? Per month. Oh. oh. <laughs> so you would think when the ego comes out, Wow, Superman, 60 or more than 60% a year, not even cocaine can make money on that. <laughs> so it's really, really stupid. And a man, with, woman is like a more developed, mature. It's, it's like a different game. But man is stupid, okay? So we did that, we almost bankrupt. And we, another thing that we did wrong too, we wanted to become rich. So every night I would think what I would do with money. And we were really focused on money. And what happened when we construct a company where you are, the owners are really focused on money? What happened? People would work for you, for you to become rich. People are going to work hours and hours just for you to become rich. Well, you should try if you want to. But uh, the wisest guy is not learning from your own mistakes. The wiser is when you learn if someone else mistakes. Otherwise, the scars come to your arms and to your life. So, in our case, in 1999, eight, actually, 1998, Mario, my partner, came to me and said, look, man, we need to sell, to open for a franchise in Spoleto. And I said, man, it's impossible. Have, we have so many things. It's so tough and everything. And he said, do you see that water there? I said, wait, wait, wait I can't see any water. Let's clean it up. No, man, the Titanic is sinking, and the, our saving boat, which was called Spoleto in that moment, will sink together. So either we launch the franchisee now, or it's finished. And by chance, not by chance, nothing is by chance, we, where was the, the franchising fair show in that moment? At Intercontinental Rio. So we had a, a, a place of this much, just a table, Mario and I, and talking a lot, and the best food the hotel could free give to us because they are all my friends and they were supporting me there. So over there, we, we sold the first franchisee. So what you're listening is that the first Spoleto franchisee was the first Spoleto restaurant because we just had a corner, a little corner inside of another big restaurant. So, but why they, they managed to do that? Because they were our guests in the restaurant. They loved the food there, okay? So we opened the first one in February. And the key money for that was to pay the 13 wages. In Brazil, we have this thing called 13 wages in December. You have to pay them for them to, to, for Christmas, whatever. And it's very common, some companies, not to have money to pay that. So for us, it was a kind of okay. But taxes? We haven't been paying for years on that moment. Years, except, not years, but two years maybe. Uh, and then we, saw, we signed the second contract in May, no, in April on that 2000 year. No, 99. The, in 99, in April, we signed the second contract. And we used the key money to pay the actual wages for our team. So when you don't have money more to pay your team, it's because it's game over, finish, 
It's over, change, go to work for someone else, or do something else because it's not working. And then we didn't have more anything. And then two guys, which were uh, gold medal in volleyball in Spain in 92, and they were like heroes in Brazil because Brazil is not the kind of country that can a lot of gold medals, and especially them, which were the best two guys from the team. They were our, our guests there at Spolero. And they, at the end, they became our partners. And how we managed to do that? Because we, we were already with the banks, we were killed, with the suppliers, we were killed, tax doesn't count anymore. And we gave exactly the same speech that we're giving to you. We said, look, we are bankrupt. 100% transparent. We are bankrupt, but there's this, this opportunity here in a place which is supposed to be the best mall in Brazil where you have to pay, on that moment was like for, for key money for, to get the place, no, $250,000 to get the place. In our partnership here, you pay just 180 bucks, 80,000, okay? And what we're gonna do with this 180,000? You, the two volleyball, artist and player, we're going to give this money to me and Mario. And we are going to pay the mall as we know them, because I used to work for them a long time ago at the Intercontinental Hotel, because they were the owners of Intercontinental Hotel in Brazil. And we're going to pay them in five years. Okay? So you give the money for us, and we pay by month to them. Okay? And then 100% of the profit of this restaurant will go to you. And when it's paid, it's 50-50. And they said, I don't know. Maybe yes. I don't know. Remember, Giovanni, we, you know, we lost a lot of money if your father last month, and I don't know. And, and there was like sweat coming down here. <laughs> because we knew that we wouldn't go out of that meeting alive. And then, it went, okay, let's do it, but with one question, with one, um, whatever. <laughs> you have to, we're gonna be playing the world tour in Europe for three months. They were playing that moment beach volleyball. And you guys have to open the restaurant when we come back, okay? That's the only thing? Yes, so it's done. Without any contract, just a word, they signed two checks Two, two checks of uh, $100,000 in that moment. You asked more for my wife and you asked more for my sister. So that moment on, we start to turn over. We start to keep the turnaround, okay? So this is from La Roche to this moment. So, and, and when you pass a very tough, tough moment, again, let's learn from the mistake for the other ones. Because when you have to make their own mistakes, it costs you for this beautiful body. I had cancer. Testicular cancer, do you know what this is? Somewhere. They took one out two months before I got married. So my wife was the one that found it. I don't know, and she told me like, look, this is not good. I said, come on, I've been with me for the la all my life. Look, I know this is not good. Okay, you know, don't tell me. Okay, fine. Okay, so at the end, I was almost dying with cancer, and she saved me in that moment. It was just one month before I got married. So, and that was a change in my life, because then you start look what is really important in life. Not what is you want, but what is really important. My partner, he has this, the, the, the um, how do you call it, the ski disease of Mike, the, the Michael Jackson had as well, because of the stress. So at the end, if you pass through a very, 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 very stressed moment, Take the best of it, because it's really good when you do this. Otherwise, it will kill you, OK? So we did that, and then we start Spoleto to grow. So this was a kind of when you had like 13 restaurants or 14 restaurants, something like that. So the guests would come here, choose the ingredients that are here. The chef is behind. They prepare in front of you and put it there. Okay, so we started like that, we grew really fast. We were like, with, in the second year, we already had 14 restaurants, two in Sao Paulo, 12 in Rio, and it started to grow. And then in 2003, we became Endeavor Entrepreneurs. Ha have you ever heard about Endeavor? Who wants to open your own business? So please, Endeavor, this is an organization focused in developing the entrepreneur culture. 
and they are in a lot of countries all over the world. They support, they believe that they can change the world through entrepreneurship culture. So they focus on change universities to give entrepreneurship culture to them, uh, to make it easier, easier to uh, someone to open business in any country, even Brazil. And they support what they call high impact entrepreneur. People that will become an example in their own country. And Mario and I, we became that part of it in 2003. Uh, and just for you to understand what this organization can do for you, they give what is not for sale, for free, which is mentoring, knowledge. So for instance, who the guy that brought Endeavor to Brazil, have you ever heard about a, a, a private entity called 3G? Nobody? Stella Toi. Have you heard about Budweiser? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Heinz? Yes. Burger King? Yes. Uh, Popeyes? Yes. No, Popeyes, yes. yes. Popeyes. This is a hard one. And, and Tim Hortons from Canada. Yes. Well, those guys, 3Gs from Brazil, are the owners of all of this. Okay? And they are the ones that brought Endeavor to Brazil. And they are the ones that were supporting us. So one of these three guy, 3G guys, he was our uh, kind of board member without being a board member for two years. So whatever he was learning in China, because they are a huge, huge, huge company, whatever they were learning, whatever they were, they were giving for us something that was not for sale and for free because of the cause, the endeavor cause, okay, the entrepreneurship, okay? So, and then we, we improved a little bit, we became a kind of this, and maybe we were around 250 restaurants right there. And then we were like, oh, okay, we're already 350, but this is where we are now in Brazil, okay? And then, wait then, oh wait, wait. So we started to do something for our culture because we, we started to take our best franchisees to do a culinary tour in Italy, okay? So we started this seven years ago to, to, be, to learn more about Italy, because what we're doing was completely what we thought it was Italy. So what about, let's go there and breathe Italy, let's eat Italy, let's really understand Italy and see what had gonna happen. We didn't know exactly what, that was a award for the best franchisee. That was the idea, okay? And to inspire a little bit, but that was the idea. But then it became an amazing thing. Because for the first time ever, you we were like 10 days in one of the best places, if not the best country in the world, Italy. And we were there with our best franchisees, 10 days. And then what the result of that is that we start to build the future of the brand together there, the best operators, us, 10 days together. And then we start to understand that we are kind of losing our focus. We became like a, a company, not more a restaurant anymore. And then over there, we understood like, we need to move forward. We need to understand what is our cause? What is our purpose? Why we should exist for the community? What is our legacy? Oh, we create on that moment like 7,000 jobs, a lot of wealth, a lot of people, but why we should exist? Whoever heard about Simon Sinek? Yes. yes? So please, Simon Sinek, write down. I want every one of you guys see a TED from Simon Sinek and YouTube, The Golden Circles. It's very, very, very important. It's very, very good. Because there is when you understand the why factor and what changes with people, okay? It's very, very good. Simon Sinek, Golden Circles, YouTube. But anyway. Oh, come on, man. I'm a Brazilian guy. That, that, you want me to make me ashamed, you know, right now in front of everyone? Simon Sinek. <laughs> okay, he was well right. He was right because he's a very nice guy. He helped me here. So, so this is the trip that I was doing last week. So this picture has four years old, four days old. So we are, this is our the best franchisee of this year. This is me. It's not bald because it's covered because it's sun. Okay, but this is our team. Okay, and this was six days before where you were what? Hunting truffles with this guy, which is Giuliano Tartuffi, in Petralunga, Umbria, where his Polero city is. So Giuliano Tartuffo, it's an amazing guy. It's an amazing product. And you were with him there. And this, where we were 
I don't know how many days ago, but this is a, it's from Firenze. It's a very big oil company. They, they have four, 450 euros million per year. And, and they are doing amazing wine for who? Spoleto. Okay, we are already partnering with them too. And then this is me again. So, but two years ago, when we were looking for a tomato supplier uh, close to Vicenza, the best guy there, and this organic tomato there, and they were like there. And this is like where the wheat, so here you see, he was teaching us what is the difference between whole wheat, no wheat, in the fact in the Molino, and the Molino that one of the three best ones in Italy, which has more than 100 years, which is our supplier, okay? Uh, why I, I got this picture here? Because three years ago I asked him, what is your dream? Because what we learned through the years coming here is that we're not looking for a big company. We're looking for people passionate what, for what they do and people that have the same values, the same vision that we have and have the same cause that we have or at least believe in our cause and want to do something with it. And what is our cause? Culinary democratization. You want to give as much as we can for the most people. But how does it work? Because if we're able to give an amazing food for someone in a reasonable price, we're going to make money, first of all. And second of all, if you, you are really, really good, the market will change because they have to compete against that. And that's what happened with Spoleto in 99. When we started, it was plastic fork and knife, plastic a plate and almost a plastic food. Almost a plastic food. And then when we were looking for a cause, we understood that the whole market had changed. Everyone has porcelain dish. The food increased much, much, much the quality of it. And everyone has stainless steel fork and knife. So without knowing, we changed the market. But completely without knowing. We were just focusing on our marketing strategy for the brand. And then we start, why Domino's work it out with us in Brazil? We were the fourth manager of the brand there. The fourth manager. A lot of people have tried and failed. People much better than us. And where we, we managed to, to make it happen? We, we bought when there were 22 restaurants, you know, Domino's in Brazil. And I forgot to, t to say, we sold Domino's four weeks ago. Uh, with 220 restaurants. So we managed to turn around the brand and make it a, a become a very good brand in Brazil. And because we maintain the quality, yes? How long were you guys managing? 12 years, 13 years, 13. So, and, and it was a very win-win situation because we managed, because Mari and I, I'm 51, Mari is 52, and we wanted to have some uh, uh, cash house of the company, we wanted to have some liquidity. When we, we work a lot, we still have a lot to do, but it, you know, 50, crisis, you know, you want to become young again, you want to have fun again, so we, we needed some cash. And, and that was an amazing moment for us to do this and to do as well for our management team, our partners, which runs the company day by day basis too. So it was a, a very good cycle that happening. So everyone now is happy and Domino's even happier because a private athlete bought Domino's and now they're going to put a hundred million dollars in the business and they're going to, as we did, uh, 20 220 stores in 12, 13 years, they're going to jump to 600 restaurants in five. And, and they've done this all over the world. They've done this in India, they've done this in Turkey, they've done this in England, they've done it in a lot of countries. And they private comes and move away in a, in a, in a YPO. And so, uh, not Y, IPO. So this guy here, coming back to him, so he told me, like, my dream is to have the best pasta of Italy the best, not the biggest, but the best. And I'm so passionate about it. And then last year, he came, I, I, I came to, him, to visit him with our franchisees. And he, have you, who is it from Italy here? Raise the hand. Who have heard about Giovanni Rana? Who? Do you like the pasta? No, oh, come on. No, you like Rana, pasta Rana. She likes. You see, they have 60% of the market. It's the biggest share in quality. They have an amazing quality. I've been there twice, and it's, it's amazing. What they're doing now in the United States, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. But anyway, so uh, it was Gianluca Rana, the son of Giovanni Rana, sent him an email, look, 
I tried your pasta yesterday. I have the best fresh pasta in Italy, but you have the best dried pasta in Italy. And then last year, this year actually, the association of whatever Italy does of pasta, when they have this Italian flag, it's because they became the best pasta in Italy. So in five years, he doesn't think so. But uh, the numbers shows, even though you're we against, he went from nothing to 5% in five years. They are the fifth biggest there in based on quality. It's really incredible this. But anyway, so and he invents some crazy things about that because he's not just focused on quality. He's focused in as well in, in, in disruption. Can you see this form here? It's a square penny. As they invented as well the square spaghetti. So an industry that has been sleeping for 300,000 years, he created a new thing and it's blowing there. It's blowing. But anyway, so the consequence of having cars, the consequence of having a, a new vision of quality and everything was that we could dream even higher and we could dream with another level of quality and experience. So we, at the end, we went to the United States. So that's why it's written here in English. So we, with the guy that was this, the consultant for Domino's Pizza, he asked us, look, it's time to come to US. And I thought, I was, no, it's not time. We have a lot of things to do here. We still have a lot to work here. And the guy said, look, it's time because I'm going to be your partner in US. And the guy was elected the best Domino's executive in the whole world. And he moved away from Domino's to become our partner in US. So, and it was amazing for us because it was someone that already cried with us, already laughed with us, and already succeeded with us. We already had a lot of challenge and we move away. So, that's the way. So, Mario and I were like, look, it's the first time that we go to the United States and we're going to go against the toughest market in the world and nobody knows our brand. I'm sure nobody knows Spoleto in the United States, even now. I, for sure now, because I know the numbers. So. <laughs> So, but before I said, so let's do something. Let's give us a chance to start all over again. Let's go to the biggest mark in the world. Let's put everything that we know in the brand, from all the brands that we have, or the work, or the benchmark, or whatever, and let's start all over again. But this time, let's start with our cause from the base, from the scratch, culinary democratization. So we hired an amazing architecture firm we hired an amazing, amazing branding firm and a chef that used to work for Nobu, that was for Per Se in New York, very high-end restaurant, to help to translate a fast casual made by Brazilians, Italian, to bring to America. And then it was the first time that we put amazing people together to work with us. And we thought that we would get like 30% better brand or well, maybe 40% if we were very, very lucky. But then we, we were so much passionate about what we were doing it that we fought so many times like one each other and, and it was like, that took us to the new level and, and to a level that I didn't know that exists for us. So at the end, we opened a completely, completely different brand there. The only way was the brand and the experience that the guy would ask for the chef, create in front of you the sauce and everything. But then, we, we didn't know exactly what's going on. But anyway, there was the, the restaurant inside. And this is what we were serving, okay? And then, that was very good. So we, in 2015, we opened one restaurant in March, another one in July, and we were so proud. We are in America, let's go, let's go, let's go. But then, a little thing, you were losing $25,000 per restaurant, plus the overhead. So we were losing like $75,000 per month, which even for a mid-sized company, it's a lot of money. If you put in a year, it's a lot of money. In its comparison, it's just two restaurants. And then it's like, look, we can always rise prices. And people, the guests, would tell us that. Now, it's very good price, very good quality, but we're not making money. And because of the cause, we didn't want to raise prices because we want to have the culinary democratization. So at the end, we figured out the way to try to change this is, look, this thing is not a restaurant. This thing is a kitchen. 
Is anybody that already have worked in an executive kitchen in a hotel or something like that? Been so when, a, in a, in a, when you are executive chef in a hotel, you know a lot to cook, but you know numbers as well. And at that moment, we thought that a good manager would be someone that know a lot about numbers, costs, management, and driving people to develop themselves and their skills. But we're losing money. So it's not working. So what is the way that we could try not to lose? And the quality as well was fluctuating like that. The guy told me that the consultant, look guys, you're going to have people that study in, in, in Cordon Bleu. And we had people from Cordon Bleu working with us. But even though the quality was like that, up and down, up and down. And at the end, we said, no, there's one chance that we can do this. It's like, if we get the manager who, who is the one that is more aligned with the culture? Normally the manager. Who is the one that never is in the store late? Normally the manager. Who never doesn't show up? The manager. So if we have this guy being the guy that actually will make the food, it will rise quality, will decrease cost of food, because he's the one that opens the fridge to get the food there. And he's the same one that buys the food. So he knows exactly what is missing. So the food cost went really down. And in three months, we start to become profitable. OK? So wait. So and then we became organic, gluten-free, vegan, vegetarian, non-glow, Jimmy O, and whatever the market asks. OK? We do too. And these are the restaurants there. So we have one in, in, in Miami, which is bleeding like hell. Money going, it's not doing well. Winter Park is like break even. This was making money. This in Florida, I'm always making a lot of money, but it's a Brazilian market. So for us, it doesn't count because a lot of Brazilians go there. So it's. And this one is a kind of making some money. The queue is big because it was the opening, so free food is easy. <laughs> and this is the biggest challenge that we have because Florida is very nice. I love Florida, very nice. And then we went to a bank asking for money. No way. How much? No way. We're in Florida. Four restaurants. Come on, guys. A Brazilian-Italian concept coming to Florida. Please ask him for money. Please first come to U.S. And then we can with And if you succeed in U.S., which is not Florida, yeah, then we need to say. And then we are in California for that. We have one restaurant in, in California, which we believe that is getting there. So, uh, but then about the American market, we were like, Fine, all the digital platforms, we have four, four and a half stars, beautiful, wow, wow, wow. But uh, what is the money? When you go to the store and you see the other brands that we benchmark, which they have the same four and four and a half stars, they are making a lot of money, huge coups. But we do have huge coups as well. So why are you not you know, blowing away as Americans should go? So we were trying to think about it. We started to, to rethink, what, what is the model? What, what's, because we're just going to start franchise when we really have the model. So we're trying, trying, trying. And then last year, we went to New York. We hired a new ca uh, marketing agency specialized in fast casual in the US from New York. And we went to 33 different restaurants, fast casual. And I ate in all of them in four days, three days. And a little bit, at least. But anyway, and then from there, we took two things. One is a restaurant that we went, which was serving 180 people per hour. Just for you guys to have an idea, it's to sells a lot per hour. It's 75 people per hour. In the United States, as we have a bigger stores, you see that Spoleto is much, in Brazil, is much smaller. We managed to get 100 people per an hour. And the guy was, do, they, they are doing 180 pal plates and doing one by one dish. I was really impressed with that. The food was good, not very good, but good. And for the price point, it was very good. And then we went to another concept, which is from a guy, which I think is the new tenants for food court, food, food service, which is guy from high, high end. Like this guy was from three star Michelin called Eleven. They opened uh, in New York the, uh, a place called Made Nice, which served the most amazing food I ever had in a fast casual, but expensive and just 45 people an hour. So not very good. Scale, you can scale, but in a rich places. So we, we thought maybe, maybe this is something that we, we need to think about the brand. 
And right now, as I told you guys, we think that we have the vision that we'll conquer the United States. We think about that and we see like the tunnel, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And maybe it's not the train, maybe. And we believe that we're gonna test this in first quarter of next year in the United States and we're gonna test this in Brazil next month. We're gonna redo one model where we're gonna start being, stop being a pasta place that you can build your own pasta and become a Thailand restaurant that have a build your own concept behind, but not in the front page, okay? But anyway, so this is a passion changes everything. Now we truly believe that, maybe this is the biggest slogan that we have in our hearts, we truly believe that passion changes everything. So we are a very passionate team together. And the consequence of that, you see, even though this was free food, but here not. This is real game, okay? And with all this learning in the US, so what are we gonna do? We have one brand here, another brand there. H how can you survive two brands so different? So look, we need to have the same quality everywhere. But the good thing about franchising is that it's a different way of leadership. When you have your own company, you go from the top to the end, one line. And whatever you say, they have to do it. If they don't do it, but they have to do it. But anyway, franchising is a kind of business. For me, it's the most perfect capitalist business ever. Why? Because first of all, we have amazing people with you. When you have values and you share the values with them and they have the same values that you have, what happened? You're gonna have people working with you that you never have the money to pay for them. And then they just don't work with you. They help you to build the brand. So it's a kind of horizontal leadership. So it's something that you have to convince everyone all the time because do this. No, I don't want to do it. I'm a businessman as well, I don't want to do it. So you always have to build together and convince everyone. So this is, we took the best operators of Brazil to work in US for a week. And they were very, very, now it won't work in Brazil. No, it won't work in Brazil. No, no, it's too heavy, it's too much work in the restaurant, it's too teeny the restaurant, it's 20, 50 meter, square meters to 30 square meters, so it's a huge difference, it's impossible. In four days, all together, we managed to get the model. Four days. It talks a lot about our culture, because together we, we did that. So, again, that's important, because passion changes everything. Passion muda tudo. So, this is what we did. Remember the red one? Okay, so different vision, different style of chef, completely different food. So here, you used to have like a, a almost industrial shrimp. Now it's fresh shrimp with truffle oil that we make every day in the restaurants. Everything is made daily in the restaurant, okay? And then this is what happened with the vision. Like, ah, this is like the one that we have sitting area. And this is kind of vision of if we food. And that's numbers to prove that we are right. So this is the normal Rispoleto during the huge crisis that we had last two years, okay? Huge, huge, huge. And this is the new Rispoleto. So in this model here, from the 360, we have 78 already changed. And this is the rest. And look at the difference in growth of sales, not sales, sorry, the number of people that goes there. Except of this year here, this month, which I have no idea what happened. I don't remember. <laughs> but I wouldn't lie to you guys. So maybe it's the World Cup, I don't know. But anyway, it was completely different, okay? And then we have this Japanese concept as well that started as a temaki place just a temaki, and he was, when we bought the brand, the, the founders, they, they got like a temaki plate from Sao Paulo, which was doing okay, and the very good, but okay food, and they hired the best chef in, in that moment, Japanese guy, to do like a culinary temaki, okay, what we call koni, koni is a form, okay? And then, but then it was very hard, and we got to 130 restaurant, and then we, the brand was dying it. Why? Because, we put a lot of things in there. We became like a, 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 Italian, a, a Japanese restaurant, fast casual, a lot of, and we didn't get, get trained to anyone. We, did, we thought it was like Spoleto, easy one, but it's fresh Japanese raw food. It was really, really bad. We get to 100 restaurants, and then we move down to 90, and now we're moving up again to, to 100. Why? Because 
we did the same learning that we had in the United States of quality in Spoleto, we brought to Coney as well. And this is what we have in, as a result. So, and, and the numbers, I didn't found any, any, any graphic because they didn't send me, so I couldn't share here, but it's the same as the other one. So we, we became nicer, better food. But remember, this is fast casual, okay? So it's really, really cheap comparing. But have a huge problem. We just serve 45 people an hour. So it's hard. Food costs very high, just raw fish, very, based on salmon, very, very expensive. Every year or so, we have a huge crisis on, on, on salmon. So it's hard, really hard. So right now, I'm going to show you something else that we're doing. We're going to start moving away from being a Japanese restaurant and start to be an Asian restaurant. So we can add, have pork, we can have chicken, then you have other kind of proteins easier to make and cheaper and with high quality as well. Okay? So, and delivery, we learned from Domino's that. I don't know if you guys know, but Domino's, eight years ago, we, I was in a Domino's convention, and the guy said, look, our competitors are not Pizza Hut anymore. Our competitors will be Amazon. Because that's where we're going. And I was like, wow, what the guys were saying. Last year came out that the, the companies that evaluated, no, evaluated, no, valorizated, does it exist this word? Huh? Increase the percentage of value in the stock market. How we would say this? Help me, please. Oh, whatever. The, the company, that the value of the company increased percentually the last seven years before in the world was Google, Facebook, um, Netflix, Domino's, or, or, or what? Dominos. Dom because of the digital, it's a very, very old brand. In the United States, a very okay or bad quality anyway. I don't like the pizza there. But uh, they managed to become the biggest growth in the United States in the last seven years in the stock market because of delivery and technology on that. So we are bringing delivery with technology to all our brands, what we learn from them. So, and then the consequence of that, we became the best franchisee, franchising brand in 2017. This is a, a, a brand of quality as being a franchisor that the franchisees give you. And we lost like two years in a row and we won like 18 but we 17 and we lost two. And it's very important when you lose, because when you lose something like that, it's because you are really don't working well. So instead of complaining, go listen to the franchisee, what you are doing wrong. Why, and especially why you didn't tell us and why I didn't leave opportunity for you to tell us, which is the most important thing. So it's always, whatever comes bad to you, I always try to get the best part of it. And this is a, a, the same thing, we, we were like very respect, very good brand, but from the consumer to us, okay, we, we won an award. And this was the first brand that we did from the scratch with the cause, culinary democratization. We opened the same thing that we were doing, fast casual, you wanted to do the same thing in the restaurant business, the food service business, uh, and the, the casual dining business. So our benchmark was Outback. Outback, I'm not a customer for Outback. I don't like their food, but I love their business model. They are huge in Brazil. They are huge in a lot of countries. And they have a very special, they have lunch, happy hour, dinner. They're very nice. So we were, let, let's benchmark that. But let's start from the scratch, from the cause. Let's share with all our, our employees in the first day, like, like, listen, we are not open a restaurant here. We are constructing a brand. We are constructing something that have a cause behind values. It's not a restaurant. And nobody listened to us because they didn't believe that. This is impossible. Come on, I, I worked for a restaurant for years and, and it doesn't exist that. But we kept, we kept, we kept saying the same and acting the same. What happened? In three years, we have four restaurants open, one in construction, and we've been uh, selected, I don't know if you heard uh, the Michelin, they have three stars, two stars, one star, we don't have none. But they have another category called Bip Gourmet, which is amazing food for a reasonable price. We've been there for three years or so, and we created 
a restaurant with, which serves this kind of food, and this is like a professional picture, okay? But it looks like that when you go there. But this, I took it. It's real food. And then we were choosing, because of the cause, to the engagement of everyone in the team, and the price point and what you have, we were choosing from one very, very important uh, magazine in Brazil, one of the five best Japanese in restaurants in Brazil. And we never thought about it. That was not our goal and not ever. But the difference between us and the other four, we are half price of the second cheapest one. And that changed the whole business. Because the volume that we serve with this quality is huge. We serve per, per month in two of the restaurants more than 15,000 people with this level of food. The other one is 12,000, the other one is like 10,000, okay? And then, what we're happening is right now in Rio, because we just have these restaurants in Rio, we're gonna go to Sao Paulo next year, if everything works, and it's that, it's incredible how the cause is happening again. Because as Brazil has been through a big, big crisis the last three years, a lot of uh, restaurants bankrupt, and some new are coming out. And in Rio, the 10 best new restaurants that open, all of them told to us that we manage to do something like Gourmet is doing it. Very good quality for a reasonable price. And what happened with them? They are selling a lot. A different Greek restaurant, Brazilian restaurant, Italian restaurant, whatever, and they are selling a lot. So in other words, they didn't get what is our cause, but they are doing anyway. So this is what we really happy about, because we are proving here that it's possible to change the market through something that everyone believes. And, and this is a brand that we, we launched three months ago, which is called Le Bon Ton. Where is this brand from? Yes. French, good, good, because it's hard. But anyway, Le Bon Ton. And what are you doing here? We this is the brand that we got from that two American concept and we put together. So, we have rational ovens here in a food court to make it amazing food for a reasonable price, cheap proteins, very well done, eight hour cooking, low temperature, so we get amazing food for a reasonable price. And at the end, very focused in our team, always. It's a little kitchen, open kitchen, everyone sees everything. And we're already serving something around 160, you know, we're supposed to already know how to do 160 persons per hour because we have two lines, but we're just having two lines of product production, okay? But we're still using just one. Why? Because we need to, buy, to bring all the technology to make the gas choose faster. And this will be ready like in two, three months where we're going to have five ways for them to buy it. First, they can buy an app, so they can buy in the car, they can buy, they just go there and get. The other one, you can have top things as that. Nothing that is not in the market yet, but put all together, it's amazing the result that we can get, because we're gonna be really, really fast to get the, 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 your, your choice of things. So we're gonna have that, we're gonna have on the queue, we're gonna pay, we're gonna pay in the cash and normal as well. So, we gotta, so like that, we're gonna be able to open the second line of production, and then we think that we can get up to 200 people an hour. But we believe, we haven't proved yet, but we think that we can get there. And then, if you look to this this year, it's a pork rib cooked for eight hours, very low temperature, amazing. Brazilian loves rice, farofa. You know what farofa means? Yeah. Farofa. But it's even better, it's panko farofa. It's really good. Japanese style farofa here. And potatoes. So we kind of get what the French have this, and we, we hired an amazing chef, French chef from Rio, to help us build the concept. The same thing that we did in the United States, the same thing we did in Gourmet, we did here too. And then, this is what happened. Look how many people are here. A lot of people. This is our team again. But then, this dish here costs 1890, whatever currency it is, but it costs 1890 for the guest. Amazing price, okay? And look what has happened now. This, this, this one, okay, 1890. It's real food, fresh, amazing. And look at this guy. Look at what happened. A very bad burger, Coke, and French fries, 1990. Okay? Look at this. 
Big Mac, Coke, and French fries, 2090. So we're gonna have 1890 plus a, 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 some juice, like lemonade or something, would be almost the same price as McDonald's. So our goal now, which is crazy, but I have the, 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 let's say, the guts to say, in Brazil, McDonald's is expensive. But they, even though they reach class A, B, and C, and a little bit of D, we believe that that concept could really fight against McDonald's, but with real food. That's our, what our dream now. And how we manage to do that, it's a complete rethink of how doing restaurant, how doing food. And, and it's everything there. It's nothing new, but we put it all together in a different way, and bring a lot of technology to that, to control, to sell faster, to have a lower cost. And then, when you do this changing that we're doing it in the brands, before, Spoleto used to be a idiot-proof concept. Right now, every day, in all the restaurants, people are doing the real food. So our risk is much higher right now. How are we gonna maintain quality and all of that? And there is no answer for that. But the only answer that we have that we started five months ago is that two years ago, wait, two years ago, have you ever heard about a thing called conscious capitalism? Have you heard about this? Have you heard about Whole Foods? The founder of Whole Foods found, found this movement called conscious capitalism. And a group of people which we belong with, they, they, they meet each other, it's like 200, 250 people every year in Austin, Texas. Okay? And it's am just amazing people, I don't know what we're doing there because it's just unbelievable people. And one of them were, was the, the founder of Costco. Do you know Costco? Anyone know Costco? They sell $115 billion a year. I will repeat, maybe it's bigger than Switzerland. I'm sure it is. But anyway, I had a $15 billion. And then the guy was doing a speech and he said, in my company, nobody trains. I hope nobody trains. Training is the most important thing in my life. I've been training, 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 everything is training, and the training, I learned this here in the heart. How come? But I was, I was most probably the smallest guy in the room, so I was like, mm. <laughs> nothing happened, okay. And then the guy said, because, we train dogs. When he said, we train dogs, everyone was like, ah, oh, what the hell, what the fuck? And the guy was just smiling there. Everyone was like, oh, blah, 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 blah. everyone talking. And then he waited a little bit and said, because in our company, we teach, we develop. We don't do anything else but that. So with that in my mind, and, and have you ever heard about YPO, Young President Organization? which they have a forum, which is a group of 12 people that get together every month to help each other. They are CEOs of companies, and they help each other. And they, this group is forever together for them to help each other. So based on these two things, we create this, which is our, I mean, after what I saw, I, I was going to say the University of Culinary, but what, what I remember, what I saw yesterday here, it's just a place where we teach people how to cook. Okay, not even close to what you guys have here. And in the other side, I have another room where we have something like this, not even close, but we pretend that it is, but it will be one day, and where we teach leadership, branding, marketing, uh, uh, how to develop people and everything, and together with culinary. So we're gonna get, every four months, we're gonna get the same groups of 20 managers, which are chefs, remember, to develop them forever. And in the future, in the next three years, we're going to be using 70% of our marketing resources, money, to invest on that. Because Guru may have proven that we don't need to do any marketing if you have an amazing, amazing product, service, and price. And if you think about how many brands that you heard that became like really astonished brands, loved brands, that really it was through a marketing campaign. I tried to remember, I didn't remember much. I know that a lot of brands do marketed campaigns. But most probably they, they, made, they became amazing brands because people want to buy. Because they talk to, about each other. So this is what we are thinking that, that's, so if you focus on our leaders, in our restaurants, and we develop them forever, 
And in between them, they're going to help each other. It's not just us developing them, because we're always going to have in the same group very good ones, good ones and people that you have developed. So it's not going to be, they're going to be listened to the other guys. Not from us, but someone which is peer to them. So if he can do it, I can do it. And then it, it will be something really interesting. And, and for us, it's very interesting, because we already figured out which are the franchisees that are not aligned with what we believe, because we can see it in the meetings, and each is the the managers that are not aligned with us. So we solve it fast. So, so this is what is happening. Okay? And at the end, this culinary thing, this card thing, so you, you start to attract people, like this guy here, which is, we, we hired him to do the same as we did with Gourmet Japanese, to do a Thailand restaurant, very high end quality, for a very reasonable price. But uh, in the middle, as we haven't started yet, we hired him to become our chef in Spoleto. And this guy here, Luciano Molosilobo, he was the youngest guy ever in Italy to get one star Michelin. And now he was really, really happy to help us because he, he thinks this culinary democracy is amazing. And then, and he was supposed to know if it's possible to have one, Italians please. This is Italian guy, just get in Google, okay? He has supposed to the best carbonara in the world. Okay, like three months ago, there was a Carbonara Day, and in Rome, at least, he was the one that was in media all the time. Okay, this is the guy, and it's amazing that he's Carbonara. And actually, we're gonna have something similar, not exactly the same, because we won't have Pancetta in, in, in uh, no, not Pancetta, but Guanciale. Guanciale, we're gonna have Pancetta because it's, it's hard to get in, in scale in the US and Brazil. Huh? I know. I know. I know. I know. I really know. But we are not in Italian yet. In Italy. That's why. But when you go there, for sure. We got better take a while. <laughs> so, so this is what it came. This is the work that we did together in the US. And this is a kind of what it's coming now for this new menu way and, and the kind of food that will come. And this is what we were with him three days ago in Rome, and look how crazy it is. And then yesterday night, I was here at PP because I have his heart of PP and <laughs> Petit Paradis, and I want to have the tomato fondue. And then I went to my hotel, Le Cran, and then I was there, and then I met through a Brazilian girl that was her, her friend, and at the end, I was sitting with this guy. He's the, the, the chef there, and he's one star Michelin. I told about you, ah, he's a very good friend of mine, it is, it is. And then, what happened, I started to tell him what we're doing, and I was preparing this presentation that we were doing here. And he said, man, why don't we work together? What, what, where are you from in France? From Provence. I said, no. That's where we are based on. We are from. So I already organized this morning with him that April, May next year, we're going to be doing like a, a learning process with him in Provence. So this is what the cars make. People together that have the same values get, get together. Okay? And then, Talk, talking about getting together, why don't you come to work with us? <laughs> we love Trigo. So, guys, thank you very much. Whatever <laughs> question you have. So, that's it. Any more questions? <laughs> Finish. <laughs> fine. I'm fine with that. No more questions? Nothing? I do, I do. No. Yeah. If you take the good franchises to the States, to Italy, what do you do with the bad ones? So I didn't hear, sorry. You take the good franchises to study in or to travel to Italy and, and US, what do you do with the bad franchises? We try to become the good. Like yesterday, good question. We were thinking like next year we, we have 20 year, we're gonna become 20 years old brand. So we wanna do something there. How can we scale up the experience that we have here in, in Italy, which is, is a changing game for whoever come. And we know that already 30 franchisees came. And it's not enough. We have 180. So 
not even 20%. So how can we increase that? So next year on, until we get to five, three more years, where we're going to be able to change. Remember, I changed, we changed already for the new political concept, 70%, uh, 78 restaurants, which is 25%. So in the next three years, we need to change all of them. Okay, it's, it's when the contracts ended. But the thing is, some of the bad franchisees, they won't reach the skills that we need to, to change. So we want to try them to get to this level as much as we can. But if they don't get, we just don't sign contract. And this is something that took us a while to learn, is that entrepreneur world, and that we learned from Domino's too, American is more direct and, and hard than that. Man, that's what we're doing. We are here to support you, but not do for you. So uh, this is what we want to do. Say, look, this is where we go. The numbers are showing it's OK. So if you don't want to come, you're not forced for that. But we will come. So it's a kind of what we're going to do. Yes? Just curiosity. Why did you choose Italy? I mean, there are a lot of places all around the world, a lot of countries with different can I be romantic or real? No, real. real. <laughs> my, my, my partner, he said, my Eduardo, we need to do something with pasta. You put water and wheat, and then you sell for. So we have a lot of margin there. But you can say, no, my grandfather was from Italy and I <laughs> Even in Spoleto, I didn't know there was a city. Spoleto is an amazing city. Uh, 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 Patrimonio de la de UNESCO. It became after we, we opened. It was like 10 years ago or something like that. And we, we, in Brazil, a children in Spoleta is a children that never stops. And we, when we asked for the, the marketing manager, uh, agency, I said, look, we want a, a name, sounds Italian, and with some speediness on, on the name, but not obvious name, it's speedy pasta, <laughs> pasta veloci, spaghetti veloci. We wanted something different. And then my partner came to me with a list of 20 names. I looked, I picked my name. You picked all yours. Let's write in a paper and let's see what happened. And both of us picked Spoleto. But then two years later, we opened the first franchisee. Remember, we were almost bankrupt and everything. And then, <laughs> The, the, the franchisee came because he was an IT guy, so they had internet. I never <coughs> went to internet in that, that moment. Oh, let's paint the aqueduct of Spoleto here. Yes, let's paint aqueduct of Spoleto. And then I asked Mario, what the f is aqueduct of Spoleto? <laughs> Cut this, huh? <laughs> and, then we, and then we realized there was a, a city there. And it's a city that has one of the most prestigious art festival there, which is Festival de Due Mundi. So, and now, Mar uh, Gianni and I, we are ambassadors of Spoleto all over the world. We, we, we go there every year, like last Sunday, the Secretary of, Se of Tourism and the Secretary of Culture was giving a, ma a great, great, great tour with our franchisees explaining everything. It, it's amazing, guys. It's really, when, when you guys, if you truly believe that it's possible, do it, because it's really possible. Like, what I'm living right now, it, it's like a, a dreaming come true. Because we got to a point where, whatever, yeah. All the brands, like Spoleto, uh, before Domino's, Coney, uh, Gourmet, Spoleto USA, and uh, Le Bon Ton. Every one of these brands have an amazing team. And what is my job now? Is to pollinize this. Is to whatever they learn here, I bring here. Whatever they learn here, bring here, bring here, bring here. So the last year and a half, I never learned so fast in my life. Never, never, never. So because of Le Bon Ton, this new way of serving things, we are changing Gourmet, we are changing Spoleto, and we are changing Coney. Domino's IT for everything, and now bye bye, Domino's. I love you, but it's cool. And so, and it's amazing because it's again, it's a culture that really attach everyone, and it's amazing how much with culture where you can get. So, Laroche members here, 
it is, I'm not better than any one of you guys. Actually, I was an okay student here. Okay? I, was, I was increasing because my English was not exactly very good. So every year was a little bit better because of English. But here, uh, La Roche is an amazing school. And because it gives you a lot of practical and experience, a real thing. So this is what we did because of that. So if you want to really uh, to own your own business, first of all, be humble. Always listen. Try to learn from the other one's mistakes. And please treat well your team. But that you can do even if you everyone. Treat well your team because it, treat well is not like a babysitter. Okay? It's treat well, develop them. Try to be look. And we do something that I forgot to say, which is like every year, before it used to be twice a year, we do what we call chess people. We sit and, and, and check in the, the development of all the people from star, uh, uh, manager of the restaurant to the top. Everyone, we used to do this twice a year, just to focus meritocracy to everyone and see not just metrics, but as well if they are acting with our values in the day-by-day -day situation, that this is what have to be. So if you guys really want to challenge something that's not proven, if you want to try to do something that is possible to change the world, please join Trigo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. I need to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs>